Well, who bought time over the weekend? I think that is the key question as we take a look at the rainfall totals from over the weekend and what is in the forecast here for the week ahead as we wrap up the final days of the month of June. Joining us now to talk about the weather, we welcome in Eric Stodgrass with Nutri and Ag Solutions. Eric, great to talk with you again, and uh, hopefully you had a good weekend and that, that's the big story. I think that's the big question everyone is asking is who bought time, who got that quote unquote million dollar rain over the weekend here, Eric? Well, I didn't. Uh, here in central Illinois, we had eight hundredths of an inch. I woke up at, I don't know, it was like two in the morning just to watch it happen and then went back to bed knowing nothing else was coming through. But if you look who got it, it was the Northern Plains. Holy cow. Three to six inches of rain in parts of South Dakota clipping north uh, northern nebraska but hitting north dakota as well then it came through iowa came through minnesota hit parts of southern wisconsin hit northern illinois and then we had the big severe weather outbreak that hit uh michigan indiana all the way down to like arkansas on sunday now that's not to take away from the severe weather that happened the two days before that on friday and saturday the farther west you go but uh sunday storms through indiana were nasty they just ripped through their tornadoes hail we had almost uh, gosh i think we're up to almost 600 reports of severe weather on that day just yesterday so you look at this map and you say well who didn't get it look at that big chunk of illinois missouri notice along i-80 in nebraska okay so from like omaha to lincoln the rains were north of that area so there's some critical uh, parts of, some, of nebraska that were missed kansas was missed as well so we, we look at all of this and it's more important i think to see some of the holes versus where the rains did fill in. So if you bought time in Iowa, Northern Illinois, pockets of Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and the Dakotas, yes, we got time uh, that was just purchased here, but this was not the drought curing rain that I think um, most of us want, right? We, we need to have yeah. more than this to get things going. Exactly, exactly. And I know you mentioned some of that severe weather Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday as well. Of course, uh, thinking about anyone affected by some of those severe storms, some pretty big storms, I know, uh, in parts of the country. Looking at the forecast for the week ahead, though, and thinking about some of those holes that missed out here, what's the forecast looking like for this week? I, I know it sounds like maybe some heat building in, some some ridges competing with the with each other here. Talk about this uh, week ahead for the forecast, Eric. Yeah, you know, you brought up an interesting point, though, real quick, and that is how does drought break? If you're in summer, drought only breaks with severe weather. I've never seen drought break gently, hmm. which means these places that are that are stuck in, in, in these dry conditions, you know, like Indiana saw, they were super dry. What happens? The atmosphere explodes over the weekend, right? So we just think about where that drought's expanding. And the question is, what about this week could help eat away at the drought monitor? Right now, I'm not overly optimistic. Now, if you're in the Western Corn Belt, I'm talking about coming out of, of, of Montana through South Dakota, maybe getting into a big chunk of, um, you know, of Nebraska. Yes, but the models continue to trend in the wrong direction for parts of Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, Michigan. And what I'm saying here is that the ridge that's controlling this pattern just lives in Texas early this week. It moves into the Mid-South by late this week. So we could get 100 degree weather, Kansas City to St. Louis. Uh, that's 90s throughout the Corn Belt. And then it retreats back west as we get into the first week of July. Now, normally, if I would said that, I'd be great. Get the jet stream to get put a big ridge over California. In fact, California needs the heat. But the problem is this. The flows coming over the system in California. Normally, that gives us ridge riding storms, but you've got to have something to feed the ridge riding storms. And that's Bermuda High. I just jokingly wrote in a little uh, article. I'm like, the, the Bermuda High has been on vacation in Iceland all summer long and it doesn't want to leave. And it's still there. And so if you start to hear some commentary that the Bermuda High is returning, I don't know where that's coming from, but it's not. We it, Bermuda highs, when they sit off the East Coast, that's when we're talking about drought in the Carolinas. We're talking about drought up the East Coast. We're talking about big storms that build into the Mississippi Basin. And right now, after last week's rains that just went through the Carolinas, there's no discussion about drought in that area. Mm -hmm. So the pattern has not yet got itself back to this configuration that will really just deliver this high probabilities events of rainfall. So I look today, you look across that strip of the Corn Belt, including, you know, uh, for, let's just go from Omaha to Indianapolis, okay? And that area in through there has less than a 40% chance of picking up a niche rain in the next 10 days. And I hate to see this because until these pieces come together, they all kind of fight over the same spot. 
El Nino is not engaged fully yet, despite it reaching a full degree above C, above normal right now. Uh, the Bermuda High is just waiting in the wings off closer to Europe than it is to Bermuda. And you put all that together, Jesse, and I, I, I lose sleep. That's the problem is I lose sleep waiting to see who's coming together to deliver the reins. So Ridge Riders this week, but not necessarily slamming into the Corn Belt. They're much farther to the south or to the west. Uh, then, then you look out there and say, well, how long does this heat last? Well, it's building mm -hmm. this week, but we get a break from it over the weekend. So we're flirting with it. And I'll, I'll tell you this. I think the thing that's kept the crop going, and I'm going to talk about this in my in-depth reports tonight. I have probably ignored how throughout May and early June, how much dew has come into this overnight. Mm. The temperatures have been cool overnight. So we've We've lopped off one side of the stress while building the other. Precip is building the stress and, and the lack of it, or the lack of heat is keeping it lower. If those two things come into the wrong configuration, I just get worried as we go into July. I was hoping that I'd be talking with you today saying, oh, it's going to open up, the whole thing's going to break forward into plenty of rain, but I'm just not there yet. And I've been fooled by the models too many times mm -hmm. to build any sort of confidence into a longer range forecast. Someone needs to send a postcard to that Bermuda high and tell it to come home. Right, Eric. I mean, Holy that's cow. what it I seems mean, like right now. You want, you want to know more evidence of its position. So remember high pressure cells spin clockwise. So the smoke that's in the wildfires coming out of British Columbia right now is riding the Northern edge of the Bermuda high all the way to Europe. So there's fires in Quebec putting smoke all the way into the UK. That's all just running North of the Bermuda high. The Bermuda high was in place would never get there. Wow, that's a, a crazy weather anomaly, I think, to think about. Eric, how about uh, the rest of the uh, world, South America, overseas, China, uh, anything you're watching uh, as far as weather there right now? Yeah, let's go to the negative side of that first. Who's going to be seeing some possible production problems because of bad weather? Uh, I'm worried about the North China Plain. So this is north and, and, and east, or excuse me, north and west of like Beijing. They grow a lot of corn and soybeans there. There has been hot, dry conditions in that particular region. There's been better rains in the, in the Manchurian Plain, which is kind of north of uh, Korea, uh, you know, the Korean Peninsula, excuse me. But uh, I still think there's going to be some problems here. It's been too wet in parts of Australia, very wet throughout Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, the Philippines, that area down there we watch very carefully. Uh, and it's been wet in India. Storms have ripped across parts of Europe, so I'm not really concerned about Europe, but we are going over hotter and drier uh, into parts of South America, which means they're probably going to finish this Safrina harvest without much of a risk of, you know, really cold temperatures that could be problematic this time of year. So I'll be honest, the world is looking at the United States trying to figure out what our weather pattern is going to do, and then the global grain flow and supply is watching that because of what it could possibly do in this part of the world. So a lot of international folks emailing me, calling, texting, Twitter, asking me how bad things are. And you'd be amazed, Jesse, at the number of people that are like in, in Europe that trade our grain, mm -hmm. that know every single county in Illinois and Iowa and Nebraska and can just rattle them off like, hey, how are things in McLean County? You know, I'm like, what do you, how do you know that? You know, I don't even know all the counties in Illinois and I live here. So it's amazing what folks are watching. And it is truly amazing. Well, and I know uh, you do uh, great, great work in uh, keeping folks up to date. And I know uh, weekly email newsletter now on Mondays. And then also I know folks can check out uh, ag-wx.com, agweather.com uh, for more uh, info on uh, your latest forecast details and, and much more, can't they, Eric? Yeah, just try to get it out there as best I can. And, and, and that's the, those are the mechanisms I'm using. I've got brand new stuff coming to that ag-wx.com website. We're going to have a new insights top frame on it, which allows me to just rapid fire update new things as I'm watching throughout the week. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, we're just trying to get the information out there, Nutrient. Well, we appreciate the time and insight with us here every week on the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Have an awesome week, Eric, and we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good.